Hello, this is Barry from the Europe Direct Information Centre at Blanchardstown Library and I'm back with another Ask Europe video and this time I'm joined by a good friend of mine. This is Aggie from Latvia. Hello Aggie. Hello Barry and hello Europe Direct Blanchardstown. Oh, thanks a million for uh, agreeing to do this video. It's very good of you. I'm a pleasure. You're welcome. Okay. So we'll, we'll get straight into it. So uh, I know you've been in Ireland for, for a while now, but um, what part of Latvia are you from? And could you tell us a little bit about the area? Uh, my birthplace is uh, countryside, a uh, place called uh, Nitaure. It's a very small village. Um, so... You know, like villages, like people know everything about everybody. Okay. Very close community. Right. Lovely people, and yeah, so that's that's the way we grow up. Um, very friendly and helping each other. Yeah. And and you've told me before, of course, when when you were growing up and you were quite young, it was the Soviet Union. Uh, it was before yeah. Latvia had gained independence. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so number two, we'll move on. Ah, so obviously I work for Blanchardstown Library, so the next question is going to be about books. So could you tell me what your favourite book or even maybe favourite author is from Latvia and tell us a little bit about it? Um, Latvians have a very rich culture and many famous authors. Um, their work has been translated and issued abroad. Uh, when I was growing up, I loved fairy tales. Okay. Uh, and my favorite fairy tale was uh, called Spreeditis, that which means um, if you translate straight, it would be the, the inch. The inch. It's about the boy who was just the inch tall. Okay. So the story was about that he went into the world to look for look for happiness and dream to, you know, getting a giant wealth. Um, but at the end of the uh, fairy tale, it turns out that the happy land is there where there is your home and the greatest treasure is the love of family and friends. Okay, that, that's a lesson a lot of us are maybe learning at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, tell, and obviously, just can I just ask you, the Latvian language, would you say it's, it's quite difficult for, for foreigners to learn? I would say so. Yeah, it's I would difficult. Say so. Yeah, and you you obviously speak English. Do you speak any other languages? Russian. Russian. Okay, and you you learned that growing up in school. That was the compulsory okay. subject in school. Okay. Okay. So uh, next, could you tell me about a person from Latvia, either in the past or in the present, who who you admire and and why? Oh, there are many Latvians with whom I'm proud of. And, uh, and, and I admire, um, of course, my, my friends, they're very nice people, lovely people. But apart from that, uh, uh, I admire people that even they are famous, they haven't lost their, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, humanity? Yes. Would that be right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, we have actually very uh, popular band in Latvia called Brainstorm. Okay. They're actually, they've been very active, not just in Latvia, but outside Europe mm -hmm. and uh, other countries. Um, and the leader of the band is very active guy and he's been taking part to various social projects. And the good thing about him is that he's being selfless and truly genuine man, even though he's very famous guy. Um, mm -hmm. He hasn't lost that. Okay, that's nice to see so, a celebrity yeah. who's stayed normal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. And uh, so just give me the name of the band again. Brainstorm. Brainstorm. So I'll definitely check them out this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, the next one. What is your favourite food from Latvia? Uh, oh, <laughs> Latvians like their food. Okay. <laughs> I find it difficult to, to you know, name my favourite because I'm not really picky eater, I love everything. But living in Ireland I miss some things like uh, 
uh, you can't. No, actually, you can buy in some various European shops, like smoked chicken, mm-hmm. okay. ray bread, ray bread, and and uh, stewed sauerkraut. Like so, okay. Latvian style. Right. And uh, every like real Latvian man's main dish should be like potatoes, salt, and piece of meat. Okay. That would be the. That's, the best meal. that's not so different to Ireland. Right, oh yeah. <laughs> not completely different, I have to say. Uh, okay, that's that's fantastic. And, and you, you said, do you find you're able to find a lot of the ingredients in Ireland now? Oh yeah, actually, yeah. nowadays you can buy all the, the Russian shop, Lithuanian shop, Polish shop. So they sell okay. a lot of things there now. Okay, that's that's. Uh, so how things have changed in Ireland. When I was a kid, something like olive oil was a luxury. Like now, we get these products <laughs> easily. Um, yeah, I know. It was different back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so apart from Latvia, what is your favourite European country and why? Uh, to be honest, I haven't travelled too many countries in Europe, but, but I loved Amsterdam. Okay. I enjoyed it architecture, colour diversity, so I love everything authentic and you know like um, I think Portugal would be nice, I like Portugal yes. as well. I've been to Portugal also. with you, yeah, yeah, with our yeah. friends, yeah. No, this, uh, mainly architecture, you know, mm. old days and stuff, you know. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you on <clears> that. <throat> Yeah. yeah, Amsterdam is lovely. I loved it. I would go there again and again. Yeah, no, Amsterdam is beautiful uh, Dutch architecture. And, and earlier we uh, we spoke to um, Arnold, who's from the Netherlands, and uh, he showed us some of the architecture in his town of Brila. So make sure you check out that video. Brilliant. Do. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on now. Um, obviously, uh, one of my roles within the library is with the Europe Direct Information Centre, so with the European Union. So uh, how do you think Latvia has benefited from being a member of the European Union? Uh, it kind of, uh, back when they joined the Europe um, Union, uh, it kind of lifted the economy and um, people have actually changed as well since the um, Got in the independence, so things have changed um, drastically. I would say when I when I go home now, so you, it's, you know you expect something, but but you when you left the co- the country, you expect the same, but things have changed and it's, mm-hmm. it's different, and people are actually getting more um, um, socialized, and then yeah, so I would say. There's big changes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and because you you live here, I suppose you notice the changes more when you go back. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Um, so, staying with the European Union, is there an issue that you would like to see the EU focus on in the next ten years? What what's important to you? Um, I want Europe to focus more on educating today's society to use the internet meaningfully okay. so that the computers and phones serve people not the other way around. Uh, the internet provides us with the enormous opportunity to grow but to grow but also degrade. Did mm-hmm. I say that right? Degrade. Yeah, degrade, yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that has to be uh, kind of uh, pointed out in public uh, yeah, yeah, and, we, and we, we live in a, a time where, I mean, this technology is fantastic. We're using it to speak right now. But at the same time, we live in a time of fake news and online bullying and, you know, yeah. so, it, yeah, I'd agree. It's definitely something we have to look at how to use these things properly. And you mentioned as well, often we say that I don't own a phone, the phone owns me. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we need to get away from that. Okay, excellent. Um so, I've I've never been to Latvia. Obviously, hopefully, I'll change that in the not too distant future. Uh, maybe our group I of bet. our group of photographer friends can all <laughs> head to to Latvia. Hopefully, um, so if I'm going there for the first time, what should I not miss? Where, where should I go? Definitely go to the old Riga. That's in the heart of Riga. 
so you could go through different like uh, um, let's say centuries there uh, brilliant architecture uh, lovely colors um, lots of uh, squares mm -hmm. uh, beer gardens you can sit in the sun and enjoy the cup of coffee okay. <laughs> So I think that that would be the main thing if you've been in Latvia that you should and, see old Riga. And and you and I know each other through through photography mainly. And would you recommend it as a place to take uh, good photographs? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, like I said, that's maybe our next trip with the the photographic club. We'll 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 head over to Latvia. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the final question is the, is the, the question uh, that I like to have a little bit of fun with. Uh, what's a stereotype about Latvia or Latvians, and is it true? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a hard one. I, I would say actually characterise Latvians as introverts. Okay. You wouldn't see many emotional Latvians right. out there. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Not like the Irish. Like, you know, no, like uh, Italians would go like that, yeah. you know, but Latvians would be more uh, reserved, okay. I would say. They, of course, they have a feelings, but they wouldn't show the, you know. Okay. Interesting because that, 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 that's, 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 that's interesting that's, because uh, that's very interesting because Han from Finland and also uh, Magnus from Sweden said something very similar. So we can see some. That's probably something similarities. Like typical. <laughs> and, and and Latvians have, have had to struggle in their history, haven't they? Yes, they have, yeah. So, so they've been um, they actually like you said, they're resilient Latvians. <laughs> you know, okay. and because despite the time of the Soviet occupation of sixty years, uh Latvia uh, kept their own uh, language as the only national language, its name and uh, territory. So we are very proud of that. That's something I think Ireland and Latvia maybe has in common. We both we both have struggled in our history to to, yeah. to to get independent and keep our independence and keep our culture. And I'm also really happy you mentioned the word resilient because we also have a, a series of talks at the moment. Uh, on the Fingal Library social media channels and on YouTube, um, all about resilience by Jill Barrett, and um, the first one is available at the moment. And it's something I think we all need to learn at the moment is a bit of resilience in this difficult situation that we're all in. Exactly. Listen, Aggie, thank you so much for that, and I, I certainly learned plenty about uh, Latvia, and uh, I definitely want to go and bring my camera to to Riga with me. So uh, hopefully when everything calms down a bit, that's, that's a trip we'll, we'll organise. We should, yeah. Thanks, Aggie. Bye-bye. Thanks, Barry. Bye.